Joshua chapter 8. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. Take all the people of war with thee. So, as God said, I, I'm no longer with you. I'm not going to deal with you until you take care of that cursed thing. It's been taken care of. And once it's taken care of, God speaks to Joshua. Don't fear. We're back to where we were. Arise and go to Ai. Well, we lost there. The sin is gone. We lost. Go to Ai. See, I have given it. I have given into thy hand the king of Ai, and his people, and his city, and his land, everything. But Lord, we just lost it. And thou shalt do to Ai. And. That may be how they said it. It may not be how they said it. I've heard three different names. I, the AI. I, and her king, as thou didst unto Jericho, completely destroy it and burn it down. That's what they did. And her king, Jericho's king, only the spoil thereof and the cattle thereof shall ye take for a prey unto yourselves. So, Jericho was no prey, no spoil at all. You burn it all, all the gold, silver, iron, metals goes to God. Achim got a little greedy with silver, gold, and that garment. Now, had he waited until they got to Ai, he could have gotten the gold and the silver and maybe a garment there. The time to spoil was not Jericho, and now, see, we're moving along. There is no chapter 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 in Joshua and his army. We're living it right now. And what happened was in Jericho, God says, you're not nothing. It's none of yours. It's God's. Now, Ai, we're here we are, Ai. We've already lost the battle, one battle. We've had this great thing with, with Achan. Now we're back with God. The sin is gone. God's speaking to us again. We're going to get the victory. Now there are limited spoil you can have. Had Achan listened to God, here's his chance to get his gold and silver, and he would not have needed to hide it in the ground. And you can have cattle. Take the prey for, unto yourselves. Lay thee an ambush. That's the first time ambush shows up. And it's just surround the, 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 the enemies. And we'll see ambush as we, as we read along for the city behind it. So jo Joshua rose, and all the people of war, the army, the military, to go up against Ai. And Joshua chose out 30,000 mighty men of valor. 30,000 mighty men of valor. Now let's go back to chapter 7, verse 4. And we'll take, uh, we'll start in verse number 2. 7 2. And Joshua sent men to Jericho to Ai, which is besides beth -Ayun, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said unto them, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai. All right, so what we need is two to three thousand. We can do this again. Now we come over here. Uh, you needed 30,000 mighty men. It's bigger than what you thought it was, wasn't it? Not only 30,000 men, 30,000 mighty men of value. And sent them away by night. And he commanded them, saying, Behold, ye shall lie in wait against the city. And behind the city, these are the ones that are going to do the ambush. 
and go not very far from the city, but be ye all ready. See, what we're going to do is we're going to drive them out of the city. And when we drive them out of the city, you go into that city and you destroy that city and burn that city. And wait there until they turn around and see what you've done. And then we'll both meet into each other. And in the middle of this sandwich will be the inhabitants of Ai. And then we'll kill them all like that. And I, Joshua, and all the people that are with me. Oh, so there is more than 30,000. 30,000 mighty men are the ones that are going to go into the city and destroy the city while these people are chasing Joshua and his men. And what the inhabitants of Ai is going to be, hey, we're doing the same thing we did before. We chased them and we, we killed them and we won. A repeat. So, in Joshua, we have a physical battle. Swords, shields, blood, death. In the Christian life, we got a spiritual battle. I know God says he's given us armor, but that is spiritual armor. Shield of faith. How do you go in the closet and grab the shield? You don't. But Joshua, we're going to battle. Okay, go in, the, go, go in your closet and get your metal shield. Approach on the city, and it shall come to pass when they come out against us. They're going to chase us. As at first, chapter 7, that we will flee before them. What kind of orders is that? Retreat! Run! For they will come out after us. Till we have drawn them from the city. <coughs> no, excuse me. Or they will say, they flee before us as at the first. Therefore, we will flee before them. Retreat. Come back to chapter 7, verse 4. So they went up thither of the people, about 3,000 men, and they fled before the men of Ai. The men of Ai smoked them about 30 and 6 men. For they chased them from before the gate, even unto Sheep Burm. So what happens? They approach the gates of the city, and the army comes out, and Israel runs away. And that's Joshua's order. We're going to walk up to that city again. We're going to turn around. We're going to run. Now you guys are going to be over there. And when they're chasing us, as soon as they all come out, you go there and burn that city down. Then ye shall rise up from the ambush and seize upon the city, for the Lord your God will deliver it into your hand. And it shall be when ye have taken the city that ye shall set the city on fire. According to the commandment of the Lord shall ye do. See, I have commanded you. There's the orders. God has commanded this thing for you guys to do. This ambush is directed by God. Now, what are you going to do when, when the Bible says and the religion says, well, thou shalt not kill, so I'm not going to do any military service? What are you going to do? What are you going to do with jo Joshua chapter 8? If that's the case, you have a major Bible contradiction. When God says, go in there and burn that city, kill those people, set that city on fire, and then I want you guys to come up and kill the citizens of Ai as we're going to turn around and kill the citizens of Ai. you got a problem. When you base your faith upon we're not going to do military service because the Bible says thou shalt not kill. And then you're going to throw everything else out of the garbage. You know, we can't do blood transfusions, and Jesus is supposed to come back 19 for, and then you go with the rest of the garbage. I'll tell you what, the, what it is. Thou shalt not kill does not apply to military orders. And if your government sends in your mailbox, I don't know, I don't know what, 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 what it does, how it is, but, but in essence it says you have been drafted for the United States, whatever, Army, Navy, Air Force, I don't know if they give you a choice. But you have been drafted, report to your, report to the military uh, recruiting office on this date. What is a Christian supposed to do? 
You march down that military office, like the order said, Romans 13, obey the powers that be. Peter says, you obey the powers that be. Problem is with, with uh, Romans, and the problem with Peter is the fact is that when Paul and Peter wrote that, they were under Nero, the most wickedest ever person to be in the Roman government, and they both said, you obey that power. Now, thou shalt not kill. That is you with a personal vendetta against someone else. Proverbs chapter 1. Let us plan something out. We're going to steal from this person. We're going to kill this person so we can get his stuff. We're, or I don't like this guy. I don't like my boss. Or, oh, I think shooting a gun up in a school would be nice and fun. Let me go buy all the ammunition I need. Let me figure out what kind of tactical units I'm going to need. Stuff like that. Boom, 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 boom. That is not. That is thou shalt not kill. God has sent Joshua and the children of Israel into the land, destroyed the land for one reason. And one reason only. They are wicked and they are involved with Satan worship. And God wants that out of that land for them to get the land. That's the only means you can take it. And if the military hands you a gun and says, we want you to shoot those people. You grab that gun in the name of Jesus Christ. Say, Father, the government's making me do this. I've got to obey the government. Bang. You don't want to pull a trigger? There's all kinds of services in the branch of the military you can do. You can go out looking for mines. That's a great job. You don't need to carry your gun for that. You just need a hat and a, and a uh, what do you call it, one of them uh, metal detectors. But you can't go and make your own Bible and say, well, thou shalt not kill, so we're not going to do military. Joshua therefore sent them forth, and they went in to lie in ambush, and abode between Bethel and Ai. This is the same Bethel where Jacob would have been. On the west side of Ai, but Joshua lodged that night among the people. So they're out in the middle of the night, this ambush. No one to see them. Get out there in the middle of the night. Listen, it's pitch dark. The only light you got is the sun and maybe some torch. I mean, the moon and maybe some torches. So get out there and hide. So I want you guys to hide and I want us to run. What great order. Isn't that encouragement for the children of Israel? What is Joshua making us do? We just lost the battle. And now our commander is telling us, go, we're going to go run. So... And Joshua rose up early in the morning. I, I always made roses up. And, there's no alarm clock. No sleeping in. And numbered the people went up. He and the elders of Israel. Ooh, here's the people in charge of Israel. Before the people of the Ai. And all the people, even the people of war that were with him, went up and drew nigh and came before the city, as they did in chapter 7. And pitched on the north side of Ai. Now there was a valley between them in Ai. And he took about 5,000 men. That's a lot more than uh, what they said in chapter 7. So we've got a total of approximately 35,000 men. Instead of well, just 2,000, uh, Joshua. We can do it. Just 2,000. Verse 12 is 5,000. And set them to lie in ambush between Bethel and Ai on the west side of the city. And when they had set the people, even all the host that was on the north of the city, their wires in wait on the west of the city, Joshua went that night into the midst of the valley. He's got this place completely surrounded. And it came to pass when the king of Ai saw it. Now they made themselves known. That they hasted and rose up early. And the men of the city went out against Israel to battle. He and all his people. At the time appointed. So there was a specific time. 
before the plane. But he was not. He did not know that there were liars in ambush against him behind the city. Come on, there's Israel. Let's go. Let's go get him. He had no idea what was behind him. Joshua's plan, God's commandment, is now happening. And Joshua and all Israel made as if they were beaten before them and fled by the way of the wilderness. They're running. We're losing. Come on, guys. Retreat. And Ai's like, yeah, let's go get him. Come on, let's get him. And all the people that were in Ai, all the people, were called together to pursue after him. And they pursued after Joshua. And were drawn away from the city. Now imagine that. God has caused every single male of that city to come out. Only the women and children are left. And there was not a man left in Ai or Bethel. That went not out after Israel. Now this is a type of UN. This is a gathering of all the people in Ai against Israel. All the men. And our main unity right now is we're going to conquer Israel. And that's the United Nations today. They won't even recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. They think it belongs to Ishmael. They haven't read their Bible. The Bible records the title deed, which hasn't happened yet, but I mean for today it is, that David paid for that land. Isaac was going to be an uh, offering at that land. The temple was built by Solomon on that land. And outside those gates is where Jesus Christ suffered and died. So here they go. In verse 18, And the Lord said unto Joshua, Imagine Joshua's running. <laughs> Joshua, yeah, Lord, stretch out the spear that is in thy hand to Ai. So Joshua's going to turn around and he picks up his spear. And I will give it into thy hand. And Joshua stretched out his spear that he had in his hand toward the city. All right, we've gone from retreat to attack. And ambush rose quickly out of this place. These are the people that were behind the city. And they ran as soon as they had stretched out his hand. And they entered into the city and took it. And hasted to set the city on fire. The city has now fallen. The city is now burning. And when the men of Ai looked behind them, they saw, and behold, the smoke of the city ascended up to heaven. And they had no power to flee this way or that way. And the people that fled to the wilderness turned back upon the pursuit. All right, everybody now is heading to Ai, the people of Ai. The city is gone, burned with fire. They're all dead. The, the masses of AI men, they're, they're, here they are in the middle. Here's Joshua. They turn around. Here's the, the, the ambush that was behind. They're running towards Joshua. And right in the middle of this sandwich, we're going to be dead AI agents, or whatever you call it. And they're nervous. They can't move. They have no power. Verse 21, when Joshua and all Israel saw the ambush had taken the city and that the smoke of their city ascended, then they turned again, they turned around and slew the men of Ai. Ooh, that's shall not kill. Nope. And the other issued out of the city against them. Here they come. The others that issued out of the city. So they were in the midst of Israel, some on this side, some on that side, and they smoked them. So they let none of them remain or escape. 100% death. And the king of Ai they took alive and brought him to Joshua. And it came to pass when Israel had made an end of slaying all the inhabitants of Ai in the field, in the wilderness, wherein they chased them. And when they were all fallen on the edge of the sword, until they had consumed that all the Israelites returned unto Ai and smote it with the edges, they finished destroying the city. Anybody that would have been left behind. See what happens, they've gone in the city and they burned it and they killed people. And they went out and left, they're killing the citizens of Ai. You return back to, to the city, there'll be people coming out of, you know, peepholes, cellars. 
Okay, the, the enemy's gone. Let's, let's pick things up and you get the rest of them. And so it was that all that fell that day, both men and women, oh, that's what I killed, were 12,000, even all the men of Ai. 12,000. And you were only going to do it with 3,000 men? And Joshua drew out his hand back. I mean, drew not his hand back. Wherewith he stretched out the spear. So during this whole time, during this whole battle, who knows how long it's been, Joshua's got his arms straight out in the air. Just like Moses. Let's see what Exodus 17, this may be that, 1712. It's miraculous. 17, 12. I'm in 16. That's why I don't look right. Now watch it. Here's Moses. We got Moses the lawgiver and we got Joshua the victory. And Moses' hands were heavy. And they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat there on and Aaron and her stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Moses' hands were up, Joshua won. His hands went down, Joshua was losing. Moses needed help. Joshua didn't need no help. That arm stayed out the whole time. Moses needed a rock. But Jehovah saves kept his hands out the entire time on the cross. Not with a spear, but with nails. Only the cattle and the spoil of that city Israel took for a prey unto themselves. <coughs> Again, there you go, Aiken. There's your gold or your silver. That's a shame. If he only waited, 36 men would be still alive in the camp of Israel. His family, his sons and daughters would still be alive. He would be still alive if he waited to Ai. According unto the word of the Lord, which he commanded Joshua, no prey taken in, in Jericho. Ai, okay, go ahead. And the next city, we're going to see more. And, th and then more. And Joshua burnt Ai and made it a heap forever, even a desolation unto this day. And I haven't checked the archaeology if they have unearthed that. And the king of Ai, he hanged on a tree unto even time, 6 p.m. Wow, that's Calvary right there. Curses he that hangs on a tree. How more wicked could you got the king of this wicked city but Ai and Christ who died for our iniquities and suffered for our sins. As soon as the sun went down, Joshua commanded they should take his carcass down from the tree and cast it in the entry in the gate of the city and raise thereon a great heap of stones that remaineth unto this day. So there's the end of Ai. This city number two, three battles. And Joshua built an altar unto the Lord God of Israel in Mount Ebal. As Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded the children of Israel, as is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of whole stones, no, no tools upon it, no shaping, over which no man has lifted any iron, Something wrong with iron in the Bible. And they offered their burnt offerings un, uh, unto the Lord and sacrificed peace offerings. Now they say that this area, the acoustics, are very good. But where you're going to pronounce the blessings and the curses. It can be heard by speaking. 
This spot has been discovered on April 6, 1980 by Adam Zetterl. Z-E-R-T-A-L. This is an archaeological spot that has been found, has been discovered, and to their amazement, this place. And he wrote there upon the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he wrote in the presence of the children of Israel. They found the rocks and they found the plaster. Not all the words are there, but most of them are. It's still there today. Not complete, I mean, weather and, and wind and all that, but and all Israel and their elders and their officers and their judges stood on, the, on this side of the ark. And on the side before the priests, the Levites, which bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, as well as the stranger, Gentiles, maybe Rahab, as he that was born among them, half of them over against Mount Gerizim, and half of them over against Mount Ebal, as Moses the servant of the Lord had commanded before. And they should bless the people of Israel. And afterwards, he read all the words of the law, the blessings and the cursing, according to all that is written in the book of the law. So he's been faithful to the words. Deuteronomy 11.29 Deuteronomy 11.29 And it shall come to pass when the Lord thy God has brought thee to the land where thou goest to possess it, that thou shalt put the blessings upon Mount Gerizim and the curse upon, upon Mount Ebal. There it is. Check that off. Now Joshua is fulfilling what Moses wrote. You can guarantee Jesus Christ fulfilled what Moses wrote in all the Old Testament. And there was not a word of all that Moses commanded, which Joshua read not before the. Now, if the law is Genesis to De Deuteronomy, Moses spent that whole uh, that whole day reading it all. Gen Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy are the five books of Moses. Now, if it's the law, Leviticus and Deuteronomy, he read. He's taking that book of Moses out of the Ark of the Covenant and he is reading it to the people. There was not a word of all that Moses commanded when Joshua read before all the congregation of Israel with women and the little ones and the strangers that were con conversant. Now conversant is keeping company among them. Everybody that kept the company of, of Israel, Joshua, read to them the law and Moses. Now that conversion, we'll see a better place, is 1 Samuel 25, 15. That's the first time conversion shows up. It's only two places in your Bible. And the next place is 1 Samuel 25, 15. And the last place. And this is quite interesting who this person is. First Samuel 25, 15. Now these are the men of Nabal. Nabal is a wicked, prideful, arrogant man. And he's married to a nice woman, Abigail. And they've come to Abigail and say, you know, David's servants have come and our master, your husband, was a complete idiot. And David is arming his men. David is ready to come unto them and destroy them all. And as they're speaking to Abigail, it says verse 15, But the men were very good unto us. That's David's men. We were not hurt. Neither missed we anything. Nothing was stolen, nothing was taken, and we had no harm done to us. 
as long as we were conversant with them. All right, you would think if you look at them, maybe you, they talk to us. No, as long as you stayed with the men of David, you you pal with them, you talk with them, you ate dinner with them, or whatever you did, David's men took care of them. And they were shepherds. They were shearing their sheep, the laban sheep, and everything. Like that. And they'd be like, "Oh no, here comes a wolf into the sheep!" And what David's mighty men would be, uh, "Let us take care of it. All right? We like to kill things. You just sit there." Well, it's it, it's awfully dark tonight. Oh man, I'm telling you. Hey, you just stay with us. We'll take care of you. And that's what that means in the company to be part of. So that was an interesting word. And that's the only two places it shows up. And you have it with Joshua reading the word to the people. Okay? And then in the second place, you have it with David's men and a bunch of sheep. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? Isn't the Bible great? <laughs> 